I wondered if I could start you off with a really sort of huge question, actually, which is why so many people who are grieving seem to turn to creativity in some way, whether it's, you know, painting or, you know, cooking art to express their emotions and their loss. I think it's because grief is invisible. The, what it, the death, the person has died, the body is no longer present and they're just completely overwhelmed by the presence of that person's absence. And often words just don't really do it. And it's through creativity that you can find hues and ways of being and expressions of yourself far bigger than your words can ever do for you. And it can be in so many different ways. I'd also like to say from your, your very introduction, if I can, is about heal, that how you use creativity to heal. And my wondering, and, and I, you know, I, I don't know that I'm right, is I don't know that the process of creativity enables you to heal. I think what the process of creativity does is allow you to express a lot of what you're feeling that's sort of incohate and kind of lost in your system. And through that, you adjust to the reality of the death. And that doesn't always feel like healing. It feels like adapting and shifting your internal sense of yourself to be a person who's alive and living without the person that you love. Because I don't think healing really happens at it. You know, it's like if you fall over and bash your knee really badly, there's always a wound. Is yeah. that healed? Maybe it's healed. I don't know. I don't know if that's a difficult word or not. I don't know what you think. Well, and maybe because heal implies too much a kind of linear trajectory from grief to being better. It sort of implies yeah. maybe getting over it. And I know, and I think you're right, healing's probably not the right word because what we do and I know you use this word is something more like accommodate integrate so maybe art is more about the expression of the feeling and also perhaps about just sort of believing in the reality of the person's death which again is so difficult to get one's head around yeah I think um, that's a perfect way of saying it yeah yeah no that makes sense um one thing you talk about in Grief Works, which I love and read many times, um, is this sense of the importance of externalizing the relationship with the person who's died and, and the kind of how linking objects sometimes can be part of this. And I just wonder if you could say a bit more about this process of externalizing that relationship with the person who's been lost and also the role that linking objects can play for people. It's to grief being invisible. And so creativity finds a way of externalizing what you can't voice, but it's the process of grief is, as you said, accommodating and facing the reality of the death and the absence of the presence. So it's twofold. It's the relationship continues, the love never dies. So it's finding ways of continuing that bond and allowing that to have its place in you whilst adjusting to this new reality that the person has died. And so the touchstones to memory, ways of remembering the person are a very, um, Significant, no, that's not the right word. They're a very, um, what's the word? They're a very straightforward way of connecting to the person that's died because it, they can be embodied and they can connect to the memory. So it might be that you write the person a postcard. It might be that you write them a letter. It might be that you wear their bracelet or their scarf or their big pajamas or make their shirts into a, a quilt or cook their favorite recipe or walk where you walked with them. Because all of those memories have the sort of all of the senses, 
you know, touch sound, touch sounds, smell and not necessarily taste, but sometimes taste. And that kind of imbues you and connects you to the person that's died when you're kind of longing for that person. Yeah. And so it helps connect to them and that can calm you enough then to do the painful work of grieving because it's pain that's the agent of change in finding a way of living without the person, facing this new reality that you never chose and didn't want. Mm 